What is up you guys and thank you for joining for episode 4 of Battle Style. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, dualist playstyle. And what is the dualist playstyle you ask? Well, it's pretty much the opposite set of um, what the original playstyles are using. What I'm meaning by that is that they are not the conventional sets that you see on Smogon or anything like that. They are much more based on the element of surprise and using a poke in a different way to force the opponent to, um, well, if they have a clear idea on how a Pokemon is used and they're not used like that, they're much more uh, able to um, do a misprediction and by default, you know, getting off wrong, really. And the usual setup for a Duelist player is uh, one defensive core. This core could also be a wall breaker. Um, they have often two wall breakers, one supporter with rapid spin or wish. Or it could even be just a setup uh, like setting up spike and stealth rocks and stuff like that. And the other one, or the other two, are uh, unconventional sweepers. And like I said, unconventional sweepers are uh, the opposite of what they're made for. Uh, the reason I choose Zorar for this uh, dualist playstyle is because it fits the description really well. It can be both. Lucario fits this description too of uh, having a versatile mood pool to do whatever the wishes for. And the trick is to use more Pokemon like this that aren't aren't that common to say the least. A good Pokemon to mention could be actually a specially offensive uh, Malamar. People have a tendency to think it is always having superpower, and using its special sets could be very very good. It works a few times, of course, but it, that is quite it's part of the thing really to uh, being able to wall break whatever comes in and actually force the opponent to do a misprediction and um, getting a huge chunk of damage off right away. Um, a duelist player is more about doing high neutral damage than doing a super effective. What I mean by that is that the premise of a duelist player is that you are supposed to force switch and being able to wall what is in with an unconventional poke that aren't supposed to wall that thing and uh, just go for high neutral stab damage often and often a stab that is you know very versatile normal moves for example is probably the most benefiting and you know, look at the moves like retaliate is something that this type of player would use often and really well uh, wall breakers is of course what takes um, the defensive core really uh, what i mean by that is that a duelist player is often using defensive pokes as wall breakers so they're not that invested in defenses but are you know wall whatever is necessary and retaliate and the reason it's called dualist is because the dualist player has often the basic premise like one sweep or you know the defensive course and stuff like that but they are built in a way that is supposed to the sweeper is supposed to defeat the other sweeper the defensive core is supposed to beat the defensive core of the other opponent so they pretty much are a weaker ground core but are specialized in defeating the Pokemon that has the same base strategy behind it. So a player that are a good predictor or even a trickster player and installer has a huge problem against these type of players because they beat them at their own game. And that is why Jubilee's player is such a blast to watch really because they have that, you know, ground thoughts about what should be done in a specific situation and can easily be able to wall out whatever is necessary and like I said they retaliate really with high neutral damage and do this over and over again until the team is worn out and you can't really predict the duelist player because it's using stuff that aren't conventional and they might have one or two that are um, the standard set but the way they play it is pretty much in their favor because that means that the opponent can't really predict on them as well as they hope to and by default uh, losing Pokemon in the process that makes sure that the things that are offensively heavy are uh, free to go out when uh, obviously the wall breaks and taking on the things that are necessary for it to sweep freely. So having all this said, you know, it sounds really great, doesn't it? But there is a few problems with its playstyle and they are wor worth mentioning. There are not many, but uh, knowing that you're going against a duelist player uh, this is actually perks that are necessary to know to be able to deal with it properly. And the first thing I'm gonna mention is actually the weakest part of the Duelist playstyle, and that is that these type of players can't really fight for too long. They do 
want the momentum of the B and that of course that they aren't the original set and the problem with that is always going to be that uh, they're not using the Pokemon as its full potential and by that are not as strong as the original set so even though they're able to wall out very well in the beginning they are not able to soak out throughout the game and this team usually works at best after five turns and works really well until 20 turns so if you're able to you know be around that and you know keep me your uh, team rather healthy then you should be able to actually turn things around um, in mid game of course uh, if you lose three or four posts during this way you're actually probably going to lose because that will probably open up for it, its sweeper um, I shouldn't mention that the sweeper is always somewhat weaker. Uh, like I said, they are unconventional, which means that the sweeper are more based on actually keeping a momentum up and doing U-turns. Um, you know, like I said, keeping momentum and do ship damage. So the sweeper aren't really as heavy. Uh, usually, the sweeper of a duelist player are either either choice band or choice scarfs, only to actually be able to do the damage that is necessary to sweep during the game. If you're able to soak that out, then you're actually in a good position. Um, also, the sack plays of a duelist players are... Um, it's awful, really. It's its always bad, because it's a part of their way of keeping their momentum. A duelist player don't really need the whole team. They're more structured of individual strength of a Pokémon. So, if the Pokémon is not filling a role anymore, then they're going to sack it. They are very, very likely to sack it, just to, you know, switch to next poke and you know keep a new type of pressure going if you're able to see what they're doing then you won't have any trouble dealing with it but of course it is a very tough thing to uh, you know see because well when you kill a Pokemon you feel like you're you're achieving something right and uh, it's such a trap really because of course that it is a part of their momentum so you might actually just shoot yourself in the foot and lose two free pokes in the process because they got the upper hand of their sack plays but they need the sack plays for momentum and if you're able to stop their momentum during this sack place then you should be able to deal with a duelist player really well or at least well enough to actually counter him of course the biggest counter for a duelist player are the underdog player an underdog player has a much more heavily structured team on keeping everything alive and uh, work at best late game. So they have actually a huge perk against this type of playstyle because they're much more able to scout it out. And of course scouting is key to knowing which poke are what. Because if you know which poke are doing which thing, then you're going to be able to um, sweep through this scene because let's face it, if almost every poke is built in the opposite way, then of course you're going to dent it much harder and you have to keep that in mind and like I said it works better late game when you know exactly which thing is what but the key is to not lose the pokes that are needed in the process remember that duelist player is um, always knowing it is a good like predictive player to begin with and the way they choose a battle like this is because they want a different type of momentum that is not possible as a predictive player so keep that in mind as I said there and um, that is basically my review of the Duelist playstyle. I hope you learned something from this. We're actually going to talk a little more about the player that I think represent this battle style the most and that is going to be seen on 3120. Before we even start there, let me just say that I've been a huge fan of uh, Alec for some time and I think he's a very, very good Pocketuber and to say the least, his battle style is probably what inspired me to actually start using unconventional stuff. Um, to say the least, I mean I've been Pocketubing for I think half a year now. And I watch a lot of Pocketubers, and I've seen a lot of guys keep, you know, doing the same stuff, really. And the very few that try to evolve as a player, you know, try to challenge themselves to do something different. And I really feel that Xenon is 
definitely one of those guys that uh, he has a good theory on what he's supposed to do in a battle and just trying to um, outmaneuver to say the least and try to find the things that are working for all types of team so he has very good team structure and uh, I, I just like watching him battle really so with all that said let's actually see what type of stats he's bringing to the table and uh, the thought process I think he has with him. So of course, as a duelist player, Cena is probably the guy for it. Uh, having a lot of guy, a lot of pokes, you know, defined really as this type of playstyle, and you just roll with it. So it brings a, a lot of needed originality to his team because, like I said, there the duelist playstyle is very hard to pull off. Uh, effectively because of course if the opponent find out how every individual port works then you're in trouble and I think um, Alec really pulls this off very well and he got a lot of blocker abilities in him blocker is what I tried to you know it's basically stalling uh, it's a way to block what is necessary to not bring the momentum to the opponent's side because like I said a duelist player needs momentum and a blocker is a very good way of doing that and just stop sweepers the way there are. Um, Alec often brings uh, an original, uh, original defensive core and often bring in a wall breaker that is heavy, heavy, heavily defensive and works as it is supposed to as a small one set really. And by default uh, catching actually the opponent off guard because he's using something that the opponent actually did not believe was going to use. And it's worked a lot in his favor, and um, the only thing that uh, is not working so well and why I don't give it an S is that, uh, of course, the unoriginal one is, um, well, let's face it, it's always something that you recognize, uh, and by default uh, is not as potent, but more an element of surprise of being unoriginal. And I'm actually gonna give a Hyper Offense as his uh, third good perk. Hyper Offense is what you do when you have a Pokemon that is clearly built for sweeping and uh, I actually think it, his choice banner and scarf pokes are very well built for um, well to sweep really and they come in very late game often and just clean the field and I think he has perfected this ability really well and he utilized this a lot when he's pressured to actually bring back the momentum he rarely sweep with a sweeper uh, he's rather trying to take out individual pokes to then be able to block and um, try to bring the battle to his comfort zone so I do encourage you to just watch that while he's battling that you will see that often his sweepers are while they're made for sweeping they aren't um, they aren't a function of his team but rather stops the momentum he's very likely to sack his sweepers and that brings, you know, somewhat of comfort in his opponent. And uh, that is actually what I think what he wants to create. That the opponent think that because the sweeper is gone, that they can actually bring the sweepers. But of course, this is where the duelist playstyle comes in, where he just brings something that are unconventional and clean the field because they're not able to stop it because they do one or two mispredictions. Which means that I can get two, three pokes dead in that process and by default actually winning. So it's a very amazing display, and like I said, I encourage you to think about that while he's battling, because it's it's mind games in his purest, and I think he does this so well. And with all that said, let's actually look at his individual perks in the battle. And here we have it. So yeah, his offensive is really, really, really high. Uh, he always have like I said, wall breakers in his team and potent sweepers, so he's all about momentum and his offensive stats really speaks for that. He's he's very aware of that he has with his playstyle, he has to have hard hitters and a momentum going and he has a good defensive playstyle too where he knows when to wall, he knows when to soak and I think he's doing that very well. Uh, he's often soaking mid-game actually, he's not so much of soaking in the beginning of a battle. Uh, he does on safe switches, sure, but that's really about it. Uh, he's more about being defensive mid-game, only to get momentum to actually, you know, having the sack plays and then just go on a rampage. 
So of course his sack play, being that he's a duelist, uh, he needs momentum through uh, sacking off Pokemon. And um, while this very often works in his favor, uh, that is that he gets the upper hand because of it, there are plays and uh, battles where he doesn't get it and by default need to sack a new thing and puts him in a very bad position very early on. Uh, he is able to turn this around with his uh, surprise ability and originality in his sets obviously but this is something to keep in mind that is something that he has trouble with if the opponent knows what he's up to. So going into surprise ability and that is a stat that I actually think this guy is probably the most original guy when it comes to um, using new sets and think out of the box. So his surprise ability is very very high and that comes with actually not his sweepers but his defensive pokes. A lot of his defensive pokes are unconventional and uh, works in his favor because it's very often that uh, an opponent do a miss switch and actually get even soaked out even though this is supposed to and he gets a lot of momentum from this and actually force the player to force switch and by that go in for that high neutral damage and that comes with his originality too that 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 is actually what he does and he's he do this in every tier i mean he's do mixed battles and i think to be able to do mixed battles well you need to know or have that clear strategy on what works and what doesn't and i think he has a good ability of pinpointing opponent's threats and walls and just roll with it with even unconventional pokes that aren't supposed to work. He he does this really well and uh, I can't really like give this guy much more credit than I'm already doing. Uh, he has one of the best battlers around there and uh, I think by default um, this stat speaks for itself. So I go and give him a total of an A rank. I sadly can't bring him to an S even though I wanted to because the sack place is really troublesome and we have too many battles where even though he wins, uh, he still stumbles a little there. Um, it's hard for him. He isn't supposed to force the switch. So when you get when he gets that momentum against him, um, he sadly loses like a lot of strength in his team, and it is able to fall apart if you are cold against him and uh, will basically find out how to counter him. But that is really it. I mean, Xenon got trouble against the underdog player as his battle style was really having a trouble with overall because underdog player is much more about being a lot cooler and um, are big risk takers and stays in when they are supposed to switch out and that is the major perk of an underdog player and that is the biggest problem for a duelist player because duelist players are supposed to force switch and do high damage rolls and when you can't do that and are forced to switch out they're in trouble and Xenon got the, the team structure to work around it but it comes to show in early game when it isn't working he has worked around a lot of this of course but his Achilles heel is really when he's he's forced to switch out because he is only supposed to switch out when he's gonna soak not to do damage and uh, we have a, I've actually seen a few battles where it doesn't work that well and by default he loses a lot of momentum but of course as a good battler he turns these battles around very well and he's very good at it so it's a problem he has but it doesn't mean that he lose because of it it just means that the battle gets to get around to 10 more turns or anything like that but he's like I said he's very capable of turning things around and that comes with the experience that he got he knows exactly what to do and he's he's actually used to pressure and it comes to shows very often so other than that that is basically my review of Xenon. I hope you learned something about him too. Uh, he's a very, very capable battler, and I see him as one of the most. Or he has a ma he is a massive threat as a battler. He he has that coolness and uh, high predictability, and just overall are very, very tough to deal with because he got the momentum. And if you give him momentum, then you're gonna lose. It is that simple. You need to be cool against him. If you can't be cool. Uh, and not switch out when you're supposed to switch out, then you're going to lose. And the trouble with that is that he can see through that too. That means that he actually predicted you go and stay in. And of course that is going to sweep you too. So it's all up to Xenon's credibility to see what you're going to do next. So he's a good predictive player and he's a good duelist player and he's very good at blocking and soaking out. So if you wanted to beat him, 
then you need to, you can't beat him at his own game, you actually need to try to do something different. And uh, I say that because I try to. I'm actually going to link that battle below and you're going to see that I try to deal with him in a dualist playstyle. And uh, while I'm very close, I will still fall short. So, other than that guys, next episode will be up next week and that is going to be around the underdog player and that is going to be heavily focused on Frank Trode. So I hope to see you then guys and other than that, thank you as always for watching. I love you guys when you do this and um, yeah, take care guys, alright? Bye.